Welcome to session number 2.2, an overview of the interface. And we will start right off with the last synth project. And as you can see, QGIS consists of different panels and um, sections in the GUI. So let's have a look at the different parts of QGIS. First of all, there's a layer list or the browser panel. So the layer list here, you can see these are the lists of layers that are currently part of my project. First of all, the protected areas, the rivers and the places. There's some additional information about the layers if you just hover or hover over a layer item here. So as you can see, we have the name, we have an information about the projection and the type of layer, which is in this case a multi-polygon layer. So it's not a multi-line string like the rivers or a point layer like the places. And the EPSG code, so the projection information is the EPSG code 4326, which is quite common, which is a normal latitude longitude projection system in decimal degrees according to the WGS84 uh, reference system. So uh, then we have different types of toolbars. So the most important one is the upper part here. We have a lot of symbols and you can play around with them. Map composer, the pan and zoom, uh, the pan, uh, pan map to selection, zoom functionalities, full zoom to the whole project itself, zoom to selection and so on and so on. We will have a look at different tools in the later videos. Then you have the map canvas, which is obviously the most important one. So you, there's everything that is part of your layers or which is information that comes through plugins is drawn here. Then you have the status bar. The status bar is located down here. It will be activated and will be updated once you are doing some sort of processing in the background or you are selecting items or you're counting items. Meaning so, let's have a look here. Oh, let's have a look here at the rivers and say I would like to have a show feature count. This is not taking so much time, so as there are just 19 items, but once you are counting a lot of items from a database connection or from a very large file or file geodatabase, um, you will see that it will take some time and you will be notified once the counting is finished. Then you have the site toolbar, which is now here, but you can play around with that as well. So you can place it wherever you want. I think due to the fact that it is listed in the documentation, it should reside here on the site. You have a lot of options here to add the new layer via the data source manager. You can create a new geo package layer. You can create a new shapefile layer. You can create a new spatial light layer. You can create a memory or a temporary scratch layer that is thrown away once you're shutting down QGIS. And last but not least, a new virtual layer, which is quite similar. So these are the, or well, this is the status bar, and then we have the locator bar. I'm not really using the locator bar, but once you can see, once you see, you can have a look shirt or it is quite some sort of shortcut to basic functions in QGIS. You just type in what you're search what you're aiming for and you will be helped. Once again, these are some of the most important parts here in QGIS. But let's have a look on another item, which is the browser panel. The browser panel might not be activated, but once you are right-clicking into the panel C, you can select the browser panel. There are different browser panels, or two of them are listed here. I'm just using the browser panel in the panel section. Toolbars are always located up here. Let's have a look here, database panel toolbar there's a database manager but this is a browser and once you have this you can add different packages so, or, or different data sets you can see that there's some quite some yeah parallelity with the uh, with the toolbar right left of it and um, but the most important things are the project home which is the shortcut to the current QGZ um, 
package. There are some of those uh, layers and you can also add a directory as a favorite. So if you if you like to work frequently with your download sections or whatsoever, just add it as a favorite here. But you can also add spatial bookmarks. So by spatial, I mean certain views on your data set. This is the browser panel. Furthermore, you can add or connect with different types of databases uh, with different types of services which are OGC services but we will cover this later on as well. Then there are some of course some um, um, other functionalities that are listed in the documentation like the save functionality over here which is the save project. Then we have the zoom to functionality, so zoom to layer. We can select the layer places here and say zoom to layer, and then we see all the items. So you see this tiny spots here, and so it, it's calculating the extent of the layer and zooms exactly to the extent. So if you have some outliers, be careful, but normally this will work just fine. Go to the rivers, so you can see there's a lot of or a bigger coverage of the reverse layer and let's use the protected areas go to this and it will be highlighted only to this then we have another functionalities which is the switch selection this is a little bit awkward to cover this right away but let's open up the rivers right click on rivers gives you some context we will open up the properties first the properties is the biggest or the, the the best way to alter the style joins fields work with the data make the data understandable changing the rendering changing the labeling and so on we will have a look at this later on but first of all let's have a look here on the uh, on the attribute table the attribute table reads not only the IDs or something, but with every spatial object, there's some sort of property. So like an attribute name or an attribute OSM type in this case, which means, well, it's a way and it's a river, breed river. So um, of course it has a waterway attribute, which states it's a river and not a canal or um, um, a, a rain harvesting line or whatsoever. So there are some attributes over here and we can select now um, different items. Let's select those, I'll minimize this, and you can see now that there's some highlight in yellow over here. You can see these lines and we can select to zoom only to the selected. Now we are zooming to another entity, right? Zoom to select it, and the, and then there is this yeah, invert feature selection. That means don't select the current selection or don't show the current selection, but show the invert. Let's do this, and now we have all the other items selected. Let's open this up, and you can see what I've selected first lines one till six, and now the lines seven till nineteen are selected you can see it, the same button the same functionality over here which means invert selection and there's a shortcut control r for this case this is the invert selection and then we have um an underestimated tool but once you're working with large data sets with a lot of points you might need to disable the rendering function the rendering function means that if I switch it off it will be the whole map window here will be treated as an image so we have, there will be no re-rendering of the of the data and by this I mean look at this I'm zooming in and now the button is just large very large and it's not rescaling it to the current setup of I don't know four pixels in width so let's open up the or let's check the rendering functionality once again you can see it's now re-rendered so 
switching off again, it is now saved as an image. I can zoom out until nearly nothing is to see, or I can zoom in into the image till uh, the information is quite cool. But you can see the coordinates here over or over here and the scale. So once you're once you're using QGIS quite frequently, you will get used to the coordinates and to a scale functionality so that you can easily either change the scales or you will have a feeling about how to deal with the coordinates. You can also input coordinates over here. But that's it for the session. Um, no, it's not. We Last but not least, we have the measuring tool. Currently, it is measured as polygons, but we will use the measure line functionality here. There is a segment, so I can just create a new measurement. Click somewhere. You can see now that it's collecting ellipsoidal uh, values in meters. Once again, clicked. There's a new vertex created. Clicked. And right click means that I'm saving or I'm finishing up the measurement. And once you have done this, you can now see the current segments of the measurement. So the first one is 18,156 meters long and so on. Um, there's also some information about it. And Let's try the Cartesian measurement, which works a little bit different. So that's it for the moment. Let's close this one. Thank you very much for watching and see you in the next lesson 2.3, Navigating the Map Canvas.